Hi, I'm Chris from Lightspeed Voice, and today we're gonna to be doing a tutorial of the Grandstream GRP2615 phone. We'll go over conference, transfer, and anything that you'll need to do day to day. So first, real quick, we'll just take a look at the phone and all the buttons. On the left side, we have your line keys. On the right side, you have park and the parking spaces. Along the bottom, you have the soft keys and those will update depending on what you're doing. On the bottom left, we have your number pad, same on every phone you've ever used. To the right of that, you have your arrows for controlling the menu and the button in the center is like a select button or enter. And below that, we have volume control, that's for in-call volume and ringer volume. Under there, we have the directory button, the speakerphone button, and on the right side, we have your personal voicemail, hold, transfer, headset, and mute. Okay, so now let's make a call. The most common method is you'll pick up the phone. Once you dial the number, it will automatically call. If you wanna call and do on hook dialing, leave the phone hung up, and then I can wait to hit dial. Thank you for calling Lightspeed Voice. If I press dial while the phone is still on the hook, it will automatically go into speakerphone mode. Another tip, if it's in speakerphone mode and you want to pick it up, as soon as you pick it up, it'll go to the handset. Next, let's go over the soft keys. You'll see along the bottom the history, gen VM, redial, and features. These soft keys will always be changing depending on what you're doing. So if you're in a call, it'll have things like end call and transfer. History will show you any calls you've made or received or missed or anything like that, and you can scroll through them by using the arrows here. You can go back to the home screen where you can see how it changed to a little house by pushing that soft key along the bottom. Gen VM will call your general voicemail box, but you'll need to enter the mailbox number first. Typically the general voicemail box for a single office location is 199, but you should get this information from Lightspeed Voice when you sign up. Next we'll move over to redial. We'll automatically call the last number you dialed. And features. Features takes you directly to the Do Not Disturb toggle. So you can see right now I'm not in Do Not Disturb and I could go down and hit the enter button here to put myself in Do Not Disturb. Now we talked about how the soft keys along the bottom change depending on what you're doing. So if I go into a call, you'll see along the bottom here we have end call, conference, new call and transfer. For now we're just gonna hit end call because we're gonna go over those other features later. On the left and right side of the screen are our BLF keys. The left side are our line keys. If I were to say put this call on hold, I could start a new call by pushing the soft key button here. Once I enter that new call, it'll move down and I'll have a second line open. On the right side, the BLF keys are for park. In the very upper right is the parking button. If I wanted to take this call and put it on park, I would just press park in the upper right. You'll hear it say 9001 or whichever the first available parking spot is. Now anybody in the office can pick this up. We consider park like a glorified waiting room. I can go out and get that person or somebody else can go out and get that person. All they have to do is press the corresponding parking spot and they'll pick that call up and they'll be good to go. We'll now move on to voicemail. And we have two spots on this phone where we can quickly access voicemail. The Gen VM button and the personal voicemail button on the right side of the phone. Gen VM, as we sort of went over earlier, will dial star 98 and ask you for the mailbox. The mailbox will usually be 199 if you're in a single office location. The envelope icon in the bottom right is for your personal voicemail box. When you press that, you'll just hear password. By default, the password is your extension number. You'll be asked to go through a set of process where you record your busy and away messages. And part of that process will be changing your password. Make it anything except for the extension number or you'll have to go through this setup again the next time you access your voicemail. Moving on down the phone, we see we have our pause looking or hold button. Pretty typical as to every phone you've ever used. Press the hold button, they'll be put on hold and hear hold music. Press it again, they can be taken off hold. And you can also see you have a resume or new call available once they're put on hold. Obviously, once that's all done, you can go ahead and hang up. We'll now go over transfer. There's two methods for transferring, blind and attended transfer. Once you're on a call, you'll see that you have the option to conference, 
new call or transfer. In this case, we're going to hit transfer. Now that we've pressed transfer, we have two more options, blind transfer, attended transfer, or we can cancel if we need to. There's also target on the right. What target does is it takes you to the phone book or the call log so that you can select a call that you've made recently or have anywhere else in the phone. For now, we're gonna do blind transfer. It's ready for us to type in a new number and then you can go ahead and hit the transfer button. Now with blind transfer, that just is sent away and it's gone. Now we'll also wanna do an attended transfer. Here we are in another call. We're gonna press transfer. We're gonna press the attended transfer button and now we're ready to enter a number again. We'll go ahead and press attended transfer. And now I'll be calling to that extension. I have a choice from here to either complete the transfer or split. Split would take both calls and give them both to me. And one would be placed on hold. The one that you're transferring would be placed on hold. In this case, I'm gonna complete the transfer to send that call over to them. And they're good to go. We'll now move on to making a conference call. You need to already be in a call with one or more parties. And then along the bottom, you can hit conference call. Once we do that, the other party is put on hold. We'll need to enter a new number and we'll be calling to add the new party. Now, whether it's ringing or we're on the phone with the new party, we'll wanna hit conference call to bring everybody together. So that's the method for calling another person, talking to them first, and then bringing them into the call. You just wait to press the conference call that second time. Now you can see we're all on a call together. One good thing that I can do is I can hang up and those calls will stay together. You can start a conference call, bring two parties together and then leave and they'll stay on the line. One of the next buttons we have down here on the phone is the headset button. Now this is for enabling and disabling the headset. If you have a headset connected and you don't wanna use it anymore or it's already connected and you want to enable using it on the phone, it's just this button right here. You'll see in the upper left, the headset icon and you can toggle it on and off just using that right there. Finally, the last button in the bottom right is your mute button. If you're on a call and you press mute, the other party will no longer be able to hear you and you'll still be able to hear them, different from hold. Once you're ready, you can press it again and they'll be able to hear you just as normal. Moving to the bottom middle of the phone, we have your volume control. Now this controls two different volumes within the phone. One is the ringer volume, turning it all the way down, turning it all the way up. The other place where volume is controlled is in call. So if I pick up the phone and I'm on a call and I press up or down on the volume control, that'll control the volume within the call. Also along the bottom, we have the speakerphone button. Now, if I were to press that, it opens the line. I can dial a number and make a call. If I'm already on a call, let's say I'm on the handset and I wanna switch to speakerphone, I can press that and then hang up the phone. It will not hang up the call. I'll just go to speakerphone. And then we can pick up the phone if we wanna leave speakerphone. But once you're on the handset and you hang up the phone, you will hang up the call. To the left of speakerphone, we have the little phone icon here. That's your call log where you have dial calls, missed calls and everything. You can press that button and you can go to the left or right to look at different categories. Here we have calls that were transferred, answered, and dialed along with some others. Now from here, we can go up and down using the up and down arrow keys and you can make a call right from here. You can even on the soft keys here on the bottom of the screen, delete or just delete all in general if you just wanna wipe it clean. Now that we've gone over the basics of using the phone, how do you set up the phone? Well, we're gonna do that now. As you can see, I'm already connected. If I flip the phone around, I have my ethernet cable going into the LAN port. I'll have a graphic on screen to make that easier to see. But there are a few ports on the back that I'll go over here real quick. The bottom right one where you see the handset icon, that is for the handset cable that goes into the phone. If you plug the handset cable into the headset port, which is right above it, you won't be able to hear anything. So if somebody has set up their new phone and they say they pick up the phone and there's nothing, even though it looks like it's working, make sure that the handset is plugged into the handset port. That's a good troubleshooting place to start. Now to the left of that, we have the little hole there that is for the power supply. Now my phone is powered up, but there's nothing in there. How's that possible? Well, I have PoE or power over ethernet, meaning that I'm getting power through the cable that also provides the internet. Your office may have this. So if somebody sets up your phone for you and you have any issue where the power supply is not there and you need to reboot the phone, 
Just know that you'll wanna unplug that ethernet cable when rebooting because that will power down your phone. Now that being said, you will get a power supply like this one here with this nice long cable. Just put that there. Now use the power supply that comes in the box. Do not use any other power supply. You might already have a grand stream at your desk and you get a new grand stream phone. Doesn't matter. Take that power supply, take that phone if you're replacing it and get rid of both of them. The power supply that comes in the box is built for the phone that it's with. If you use the wrong power supply with your new phone, that actually voids the warranty. You do not want to do that. So make sure you use the power supply that comes in the box. I'm saying it so many times because it's very important and you will usually break the phone if you use the wrong power supply. You don't want to do that. So let's now flip this back around. Now we have our ethernet cable going into the LAN port. Now you have a second port here to the left of that that looks like it's got a little computer icon. That is the PC port. How are they different? The LAN port is where the internet needs to go to provide internet to the phone. If I were to take this cable that is coming from our modem, router, or wherever within your office and plug it directly into the PC port, our phone would not get internet and would not work. But what is this port for? Well, if you already have internet at your desk and you only have one cable that's running to the computer, what this can be used for is daisy chaining, where you take the cable out of the back of the computer, you plug it right in here, to the LAN port. Now the phone has internet, but your computer doesn't. How do you resolve that? Well, in the box, you will get another shorter ethernet cable. That's what this short ethernet cable is for. It's for daisy chaining. So you'd plug that into the PC port and then take the other end and plug it into your computer. So now the internet is flowing from your modem or router to the phone, out of the phone, into the computer so that both devices can get internet. And those are the basics of setting up the phone. And even before your port date, you'll be able to make phone calls. You won't receive calls until your numbers are ported in. This has been setting up the Grandstream GRP2615, and thank you for choosing Lightspeed Voice.